Welcome along to a Lorna Park special here on WLR. Brick Flicks, a tribute to the inter-county career of the record-breaking Dacia hurler Michael Brick Welch, brought to you by PwC Waterford. Tomás McCarthy here till 7 o'clock. Well, over the next hour, Dan Shanahan, Justin McCarthy, Davy Fitzgerald, Eddie Brennan and Michael Dignan will all reflect on a stellar 17 years for the Strapley man and we'll go back in time to relive all his best bits in a Waterford jersey. You're listening to Brick Flicks here on WLR. Nobody does it better. The best team player that's ever played with Waterford. It's simple as, there's no debate. That's what he is. And his humility and his... His crankiness at times, you know, he's just he's just different gravy like he's as good as you baby you're the best. It's going to drop short inside. Ben is snaps up and drags it. He's dragged down. Good chance for a goal here. Farm the break takes a chance. Yes! Goal. It's a goal for Waterbird! Brick wants to deliver! Out it comes to Brick Wall. Brick on the 45. What can he do? He's looking for options. He has a look. He has a shot. Sends it over the bar. Great to see Brick on the scoreboard there. Slow build up, but it took the experience of the Strapley man to stick, steady it down. Send it over the bar. Lovely score, Brick Wall. Offloads it to the break. Will Brick take on Hanbury? He does. He's coming here to 45. Good play by the break. He's still going with it. Near the sideline. Has a look. Takes his shot. And sent it over the bar. Oh my God, what a score by the break. Yeah, Great goal in the last day. That's a good point as he scored yeah, in his yeah. illustrious career. Yeah, fabulous. Absolutely fantastic. In on the sideline he was. Some kind of magic inside. Jamie had a man on top of him, but Jamie wins that near the side and lovely touch from the four mile man. Lovely hand pass inside to the brick. Brick has a look. Brick takes a shot, sends it over the bar. Jamie Barrett at his brilliant best, controlled it well. Over the brick, over the bar. Lovely bit of hurling. Nobody does it better. Waterford peeped the pressure on the goalie. Morris wins it back. Back to the brick. Brick has a look, sends it over the bar. Two points from the. Strapley man, haven't seen that before in a few minutes, but Brick onto it like a flash. Well done, Morris. Kept the pressure on. Back to Brick Walsh. Over the bar. Two points I from the Brick. Oh, the count for Brick takes it down. Oh, it's a goal! What a goal by Brick Walsh! Set up by the youngest on the team and give it to the old man himself. What a start for the Strapley man. Full credit to Bennett. What a finish by the Brick. Back of the net. What a goal. What a start. On comes the brick walls. The record 76 appears. Will it be the last time we'll see him in a war for short? Sure. When you get a bunch of under 14s together, you'll it's say, little, no hand passing lads, we're doing the brick flick, and every one of them <laughs> know that's some tribute to a guy. Yes, Michael Brick Welch made 76 championship appearances for Waterford between 2003 and 2019. He won four All Stars, three Munster titles, and two National League medals. He served as captain under four different Dacia managers Justin McCarthy, David Fitzgerald, Michael Ryan, and Derek McGrath. He played in Crow Park 16 times, appeared in 10 Munster finals, and was nominated for the All Stars on 10 occasions. Well, Dan Shanahan is very familiar with the Strabley man, both as player and selector. And he told me about his first impressions of the brick. Yeah, Tomás, it's a while ago now. The memory would be great, but again, this figure coming in, Tomás, that young lad coming in, enthusiastic, hard-working, you know, coming from Strabley, probably not much hurling, but I have to give credit to Justin for, for bringing him into the setup, like, you know, and I don't think we've ever, just Justin has had a, uh, had a lot of control and, and vision of good horrors in the war from when he started to Moss and I think a lot of us holders know oh Justin a lot because he brought us all into it at some stage from 2000 
and two when he came in, like you know. But he bought the brick in three, and I don't think we ever looked back since, like you know, the the hunger he showed and the, the willingness to get better. Tomas was unbelievable, like you know, and Brick could tell at the start he was raw at the hurling, like you know, he's probably more of a football man. But by God, what he bought was the hat to win the ball, like you know, and you can't teach that in any young fella, Tomas. You had to have it, and he had it when he came in from day one. Yeah, well, what sort of presence was he uh, around the camp, Dan, in, in your experience? Yeah, around he was unbelievable, Tomas. Um, as the years went on and on, Tomas, he, he was a leader. Do you know, he, he became captain there, just a man and captain. I heard Justin during the week speaking of him and he couldn't have made a better man captain. And his leadership, Tomas, on and off the field was unbelievable. On big days, he never left you down. I don't think he ever saw him having a bad game. Tomas, that's how good he was in every game. So he was, he, he was a, you know, he was unbelievable to to win that dirty ball, Tomas. Like, you know, I was one of the cute horrors there when he was around that you might stand out and he'd often go into the rock and come out with the ball and he'd be outside the layoff to you. Like, you know, and he was one against three, one against four. <laughs> Nine times out of ten, the brick would come out with the ball. Like, you know, and you can't train that into people, Tomas, if they have it or they don't have it. And from, I say, a young man, this man had it. Like, you know, and he's gone on to prove it with his own club as well, Tomas. I think he's 10 county senior football medals, has played senior hurling for over a decade with his club. And you named all the stuff he's won there, like, you know, four, four all stars in different positions. Do you know, um, 76, uh, 74, 76 appearances in a county jersey. And uh, I cannot remember him being injured in any of them games, Tomas. Do you know what I'm saying? To, uh, or missing a game. Yeah, well, like, phenomenal. Yeah, how, how would you keep himself in such good shape, Dan, over the years? Yeah, Tomas, um, it, it's, I suppose Tomas. He he was uh, he he looked after himself, Tomas, on and off the field. As simple as that. Um, you know, you're looking at it. He may Michael probably uh, like, um, admit himself he got lucky with having no injuries or serious injuries. The amount of the amount of stuff this man has played on Tomas over the last decade has been unbelievable. His club have been in the knockout stages of the football, going into October, November. Pack it up then for a month, and who would come back with January? And we often said to him when I got into the section side with Derek. I take a month off Michael there and take no way. He he wanted to go back straight away and that wasn't his way to to take a month off. He wanted to go back and do it from the start and be in from the start, like and train like anyone else. The the dedication he has showed is, is unbelievable. Like I couldn't speak highly to him and Tomas to, to be here talking about him is an honour for myself, but I have played with him and I've coached him and I don't think I've ever coached a better man that wanted to get better and better at every training session. Yeah, as as we all know, Dan, he did most of his talking on the field. But were there occasions where he he you kind of rallied the troops in the dressing room before a match or at half time from, from your own memory? Oh, definitely, Tomas. Yeah, there was plenty of occasions where where Michael would have stood up, not really stood up in the dressing room, Tomas, or but he would have got his point across to the players a number of times in his own way. Whether it was maybe two minute talk, it was never going on that too serious. He just got his point across, and when he opened his mouth, the lads listened. That's the respect you had in the dressing room, like you know, and you know when you have that respect and admiration from your fellow teammates and your fellow players, and respect from your other players in opposite counties as well. You know, when he when he spoke for Waterford, lads listened. He was a fantastic speaker. The little bit he did, but he brought his leadership to the field. And I've I yet to see him really, rarely, maybe once, maybe twice, having a very bad game for Waterford. Apart from that, he gave it everything. And when he played poorly, just once or twice, he always gave it everything he had to us and. Look, as I said, he, he he's, he's a massive loss to Warford GA. So he's an unbelievable loss. And there's only when he's gone, that fellas have known that, 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 that you'll be missed. And to replace him, he's in, you can't never replace Michael Welch because he's he's just a leader. And leaders are hard to get. Mm, was he a very positive influence on the young players as well and that were new to the, the Waterford panel? Yeah, he was brilliant to Moss with the younger lads. But he, we were lucky enough to have trips away and stuff like that like you know maybe a photo island before big championship games in the last number of years and he'd always want the room with a younger lad to, to just to, to be in the room with him Didn't, which was, we, we never put Michael he never came to us and asked to be with a younger lad but we just mixed it up there Tomas and he'd bring the young, younger lads to train and there in the car if they go to, or into town maybe for downtime they'd go in the car three or four and off they'd go like you know and he was brilliant with the, on, 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 with the, with the lads the way he Adapted, I suppose, Tomas from being with the older lads and coming down into the, the younger lads that came through the one of Ireland's and 21s, minors and 21s, and the way they looked up to him, which was, which was unbelievable. Like, you know, it's just, just a gift that he had, like, you know, and a gift that I saw as a player with him and as a coach training him that the way he, he looked after everyone that he could and himself was a credit himself. 
And do any particular games or moments stand out then when you look back at his 17-year career at Waterford? Ah, there's plenty more. So I could be here all night talking about his 17-year career at Waterford, but I suppose uh, we, we, what's the two, two years ago the, the think of the, the, the game against Limerick in, in, um, in Limerick, uh, sorry, against Tipperary in Limerick where we were stuck for numbers and I suppose we asked Brick to go back, wing back, he'd been he'd been soldiering up in the today Austin's goal but should have been a goal and wasn't that we we played on wing back and there wasn't a blink out of him Tomas he came from like he, he was used to playing in the backs and we just we were caught for for defenders with with injuries and suspensions after the, the Clare game and he stood into wing back and had no standing game that day. Like you know you could play him anywhere. The one place he hasn't played is I suppose in goal. And I bet you he'll do that in his lifetime in ten years' time when he's still <laughs> playing for Strabble he'd probably play in goal. But um no he he was a fantastic leader Tomas as I said and there were so many games that he stood out and Tomas was phenomenal, like you know, and I've I've got a few goals in my career, but I guarantee you and he he'd a lot to do with him. And one stands out was a Limerick uh, Limerick game in zero seven across field ball for my second goal. There was the brick put it in there, like you know, and you know, he he was that team player. He just he knew where the, the danger was and he didn't give a hoot who scored Tomas or whether he scored or anyone scored. The man got the ball in the best position and Walford won. That's all he cared about and no, he, that that's unbelievable to say now that Tomas. I heard other lads talking during yeah, yesterday in your program with Damien Tiernan and, and every I have to to say every word that other people and players, ex players and ex Cunningham have said I have to agree with you. He was a phenomenal man. Lovely words, Dan. Thanks a million for dropping in today. Look back on the career of Michael Bergwelsh. Thanks very much, Tomas. Pleasure. Fresh legs could be vital. Puck out by Murray. Warford lead 114, 112. Brick keeps it in play. Great play by Brick. To Malumphy's midfield park. Brick wins it back. Great bit of skill by the Brick. The AIB man steadies himself. Sends the ball across. Looking for Big Dan. There's Dan onto it. He leaves it for Murray. What's Dan doing? He's got inside his marker. Takes his shot. Oh, it's a goal! Number two for Jan. The man! Into the Kaline and he goes, he put out his hand like an aeroplane, ready to take off, and who would blame him? Moving house yesterday, he moved the Limerick defence there, and really steadied himself, was going to blast it. Murray is good on the blast, but he's not going, it's along the ground. Good thinking by Dan, super score, 214, 112, well played Dan. Lauren Laporca with Tomás McCarthy on WLR. Thanks to PWC Waterford. Well, in 2017, Brick won his fourth All-Star in the half-forward line. The Strabelli stalwart went on a scoring spree that summer, hitting two goals and three points. Porrick has the ball now. He sends it in long. It's high. It's going to drop inside the big square. Morris comes out but fails to hold. Ducked down into Ben Keneally. And the Offaly defender does well. But his clearance is a poor one. Out it comes to Brick Walsh. Brick on the 45. What can he do? With it? He's looking for options. He has a look. He has a shot. Sends it over the bar. Great to see Brick on the scoreboard there. Slow build up but it took the experience of the Strabley man to st- steady it down. Sent it over the bar. Lovely score Brick Walsh. We're into the injury time. Didn't see the board go up. I'm sure it'll be two minutes of additional time the the officials haven't lifted up a board well I didn't see if they did we'll follow the play short puck out for to be watching yeah. things like that Philip Mahoney outside the 45 just one minute of additional time ball is with Ty De Borca. he's on the 65 it's going to drop short inside Ben snaps it and drags it he's back down good chance for goal here for the break takes a chance yeah. goal. it's a goal for Waterford Brick wants to deliver Shane Bennett set it up Give it to the brick. I think we'd have got the advantage rule. It could have been a free for Warford. Play on, says the referee. And no better had to play on than the brick walls. Ball in the back of the net. 36 minutes gone. Brick to genius. Sends it out towards the middle of the field. Right down in front with Paul Morris. The nutrition specialist goes for a long one. Looks a good one. Socky's looking straight up. But it drops into his hand. Sun was in his eyes. The sun has come out. Didn't stop Socky catching that one. Great save. Real dangerous one. Did very well. Sends the ball long. Looking for the brick. Brick is about 40 metres out. He's turning these markers over the shoulder. He's having a look. He's taking his shot. It's looking a good one. It's gone over the bar. That's a super score by the brick. Did well to take that long ball from O'Keefe. 40 metres out. Over the shoulder. Magic from the brick. Yeah, and you know, uh, Michael Welch wouldn't be noted for his oh. score getting, but that was a fantastic score under tremendous pressure over the shoulder and over the bar. Out to fives. Sun coming out here, Dahl into the corner to Jake. On the Cusick stand side there, trying to get around his marker 20 metres out, trying to find the ball in to Shane Bennett. Flick away by Shane down into the far corner. Devon stand side. The Valley Circuit man is going forward. He's been pushed, he's been hurried. Ball to Cantor, Rick takes it down. Oh, it's a goal! What a goal by Brickwell! Set up by the youngest on the team and give it to the 
old man himself. What a start for the Strawberry Man. Full credit to Bennett. What a finish by the brick. Back at the net. What a goal. What a start. Unbelievable. Shane Bennett got the ball in the corner. He beat two Cork defenders and he got an inch perfect ball to brick. Second goal for Brick in this year's championship and a very, very important one. Four minutes gone, one one to two points, and Bennett the provider, Brick the finisher, young to old. We don't matter who gets him, but Brick definitely rattled the net and Nash is scratching his head. How did that one go in? Ball from the puck out into the middle of the field, plucked out here by the captain. Great play by the Della Sal Montour. Oh, he offloads it too quickly, but Austin is in to take it up. That's Austin Gleason the Mount Simon he's going backwards now he's gone inside he's 45 looking for options one of them is way across near the right hand wing Kieran Bennett Kieran sends it down for Jake Jake is having a busy afternoon grabs it in front of Hanbury offloads it to the break will break take on Hanbury he does he's coming here to 45 good play by the break he's still going with near the sideline has a look takes his shot and sends it over the bar oh my god what a score by the break yeah, Great goal the last day. That's a good point as he scored in yeah, his yeah. illustrious career. Yeah, fabulous. Absolutely fantastic. In on the sideline he was. Lauren Laporca with Tomás McCarthy on WLR. Thanks to PWC Waterford. Well, at the WLR Granville Hotel GA Awards in January 2018, former Tipperary goalkeeper Brendan Cummins asked to brick about his goal-scoring exploits. Michael Brick Walsh, a uh, prolific goal scorer. I thought I'd never, ever have to say that out loud. <laughs> but anyway, we have, <laughs> there it is. Like, you popped up in more areas looking at your heat map for all the world in more goal scoring areas than you probably ever had before. Did you feel a responsibility consciously at the start of 17 to say, right, if we're going to win more matches, I need to be more goal scoring positions? Was there any thought at all or just naturally happen? I suppose it's a bit like yourself on the goal, Brendan. You throw a hurley in the way and you might, get, you might be lucky enough that it hits you and make it look good at the same time. <laughs> well, it's, a, it's gone to the stage now where I suggest for the, the coming weeks you practice your celebration, whether it's going to the corner flag or the handy doing the, the, what you call it, the Delhi Alley uh, handshake with some of the lads because the way you're scoring goals, you need to do something trademark. But no, it, it, it certainly gave a huge boost to your colleagues and you really took on the responsibility and it's one of the best years, to be fair, you've ever had for, for Watford. Ah, look, uh, I suppose at the end of the day, uh, like, it's all about the team and I suppose, again, the lads instill that to us. Um, I suppose picking out a fella here tonight, I suppose, you know, like forwards generally get um, credit and all that for, for scoring and all that, but we'll say, not picking on him now, right, but Philip, Philip Mahoney as a, as a back, people don't see the work that, that they do that is more important than a fella getting a goal or that, because uh, we'll say the, the best bit of back play over the last couple of years that got huge credit was obviously JJ Delaney on Seamus Callan. And those kind of things go unnoticed at times. And I suppose in the inner circle, as you know yourself, um, the lads place great credit on that. And that's what you need. You don't, it's not all about, obviously it's great when you see Jamie scoring two fantastic goals like he did against Cork and that. But sometimes you might get a better kick out of a fella uh, winning a ball back or, or hooking his man and it goes out wide. Things like that, that, that where supporters mightn't see the... <laughs> a great lift that a team gets from that. We are blue and white. We are WLR. Welcome back to a Lorna Parker special here on WLR. Brick Flicks, a tribute to the inter-county career of the record-breaking Michael Brick Welch, brought to you by PwC Waterford. Well, Brick made his first championship appearance as a second-half sub for Tony Brown against Kerry at Welsh Park in 2003. Well, Justin McCarthy gave him his debut that afternoon and made him captain in 2007. Well, the Corkman joined me on the show back in 2018 and Justin saw his potential as an inter-county hurler. Well, I, I'd seen him play football before that in that game here and there and, um, you know, obviously, like, he was, you know, when, when he came in, um, you could see he had certain qualities. Um, you know, he'd... Uh, he always fears determination. Um, he was cool when he was playing. Um, he was very, very proud of, uh, and what he could do. I mean, insofar as you know, he, he was self motivated. I would say. Um, obviously, his hurling maybe had to improve because that's one of the things maybe from a football background. But you know, we worked on that, and he worked on that. And as he went along, he was—you could see his hurling skills were, were getting better. Um, 
But uh, you know, there, there's there's no doubt he, he was he was a great type of character in a team where you needed fellas who could stand up and be counted and and could um, uh, you know that, that uh, when when a situation arose he could apply himself. I'd say if you put him in goal or full forward or centre field or centre back or centre whatever position he'd go in, he could apply himself. He, he had that great discipline, which which very few players have. They'd be fussy where they'd play and they wouldn't want this or want that. You know, he, he was he was just a, a, a treat like to be involved with. And from the day he came in, that I saw him and I made him captain in, in, in 2007. Uh, I, I rang him up and said, I want you to be captain. He was surprised, but he had tremendous qualities. I'd say Rick Welsh could get his place in any team in Ireland, in, in, in hurling and maybe football as well. But he was that type of player that you'd need within a team that could stand up and be counted and and uh, be, be very, um, you know, and no matter what the challenge was, um, he he was there confronting us and could take it on board and was never phased by an occasion or who he was on. He, he certainly had great belief in himself. And, I, you know, he was, he was, he was, as I said, he was proud as well to, to, to carry out any any job he was asked to do. So over, overall, like he was just, a, he, he was just a, a pleasure. And was that a fairly straightforward decision in 2007, Justin, to make him captain? Well, you're looking for leadership within the team. You look for somebody that wouldn't be that would be able to stand up and and play, uh, you know, a kind of a game that you, you know you wanted to be playing. You you wouldn't want fellas to be getting getting the captaincy. Maybe that might be too much for him, or he'd be overawed by it. Not that the other captains. Ken and Fergal Hartley in my time, they were great captains too. Mm. But I think Brick at the time had that leadership qualities w- which you need. And and fellas would look up to him and it, when things were going wrong that he could, you know, he could keep going and he wouldn't be, uh, you know, he he wouldn't be beaten on the field. And he, he could show that kind of leadership and, and you know, the, the, that that purpose about him which which is so important in, in, a, in a player. Um, so I, you you have to pick him out like that. That he was, he was that bit extra special. And how was he like in the dressing rooms, Justin, on those uh, big match days? Well, you know, he's he's able to voice his opinion. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. And and when he when he does voice, he's listened to, because they know when he's talking, he can deliver himself. He's not a fellow that go out and say, "Well, we should do this, that, or the other. Or take these fellas on, or we shouldn't be afraid of this team or that team." You know, you knew well that he was one of the fellows that when he went out, uh, that he was going to play his part and perform to the best of his ability all the time. So that, that's important in, in that in the in the what you need in that captaincy and the leadership. Um, and he, he had that he had that way about him. I remember one time he 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 played and he, he had a bandage on his fingers, and I said, "Well, I said, what, what happened? What happened? Did you did you get a, did you get a bang?" I said it was broken there last week, and I said, "Why, why didn't you tell me?" Ah, see, it is great. So I, I played, I played away. He said there was no bother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was another fellow. He might be up for a month. You know, he, he was teeth tough. He was fierce, hard, and he had that that inbuilt kind of determination about him uh, that he, he wasn't going to give in, uh, and and certainly like that's a quality that he portrayed right through his career with Warford. I could see. And in my time, certainly as well, and watching him afterwards too, um, he, he was that type of player like that. You know, there, there was there was no end to him. You 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 you'd never get him down, and you, you and you'd and you'd never best him. And and on, on the field of play, Justin, what were his kind of main qualities that made him really stand out from the rest, in your opinion? Well, if it was a hard ball to be won, I can tell you, he, he'd be in to win it, and he could get it. If there's a ball that you you know that that you want to retrieve, or or, or as you say, it was it was the last cause, he'd hunt back or he'd hunt forward, and you know he'd make sure he he, he was very tuned into a game, you know he was never faced by the crowd or who he was on, or the opposition or anything like that. So you know he he could win he could win his own ball. He could you know as he, as he was getting older, I could see him there like winning balls on on the ground that no one could win. And in today's game, where there's a lot of malaise and a lot of congestion and so on, he could still come out with the ball, and he knew like his capabilities too. 
Um, you know, he, he could flick a ball out off the hurley. In fact, other fellas are copying that now. I can see in hurling that there's Kitten giving short little passes off the hurley, and that was one of the traits that he had, uh, you know, give a hand pass. Um, he could also, like, take the odd score here and there, too, or make a score. He had great, he had great vision. He knew what was happening around him. And, and that's what his coolness and his kind of a brain that he had, that he, he could realise what was around him to give a ball, a better ball. He was very unselfish like that. And and you, you mentioned earlier, Justin, that you could play him in any position you know, on the field, but in 2007, he was out at midfield and he really excelled and probably had one of his best seasons for Waterford. I, he had great seasons for Waterford overall. I mean, you know, I, I often started him in full forward in the earlier days and we knew we were going to bring him out the field then and, and bring him out on the field. But it, like his application, if you set him... You know, like you're going into goal today. Is that okay? Ah, so that's grand. It's and give hundred percent, and that's it. He was never going to be. You know, he was a great team player. And, um, you know, he he was going to fit in no matter what happens when he when he was center center the field or center back or center forward. Um, you 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 were guaranteed hundred percent. Basically, you couldn't say that with very few players. And now, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me great pleasure to present the cup to the captain of the Monster Scene of Holland Champions for 2007. From Stripoli, Michael Brick Walsh. Lorne Laporca with Tomás McCarthy on WLR. Thanks to PWC Waterford. Well, Michael Welch broke Brendan Cummins' record for championship appearances against Cork in 2018 when he stepped out for the 74th time. He marked the occasion with an assist for Tommy Ryan and that night on the Sunday game, Eddie Brennan and Anthony Daly sung the praises of the brick. Yeah, look, I suppose I would have um, came across brick right from when he started. And uh, like in 2004, it was probably the first time we were on the same field together. And I have to say, you know, an honest fella when you're on the field, he was hard and tough. Um, there was never any kind of um, silly stuff out. But for me, for young lads to look at Brick Welsh, and we're not trying to write him off and say he's no, finished it today. No, he broke the record for championship, championship appearances, appearances today. today. But for what, what I think is so important about Brick Welsh is just his ability to do the right thing all the time. It, there's nothing fancy or flashy about him. And I suppose he, he invented a skill even himself. Yeah. <laughs> you, you look one of the, the things, brick flick. It's one of the things that is now that that's, that's imagine getting a skill called after yourself, but yeah. actually every time we're coaching a team now we coach the brick flick <laughs> where you throw the ball and you flick it off the hurley instead of the hand pass yeah. because normally now with the tackling you can't get the hand pass away. So brick throws it out and flicks it five yards and uh, it's was... actually something now when you get a bunch of under fourteens together, you'll it's say little no little hand passing lads, we're doing the brick flick and every one of them know <laughs> that's some tribute to a guy. Now then there's a chance here for Brick Walsh in the 74th game, out to Tommy Ryan. Oh, what a goal for Waterford. There was a goal in the game, and it's been finished off by Tommy Ryan. And it's been created by the man who made history today, Michael Brickwalsh. Waterford are making a substitution. The crowd are on their feet to honour Michael Brickwalsh. What service he has given. Will this be his last game for Waterford? Many will hope it isn't. We are blue and white. We are WLR. Welcome back to a Lorna Parker special here on WLR. Brick Flicks, a tribute to the inter-county career of the record-breaking Michael Brick Welch, with thanks to PWC Waterford. Well, Davy Fitzgerald managed Michael Welch for four seasons, reaching the All-Ireland Final in 2008 and winning the Munster title in 2010. And he told Damien Tiernan on Dacia Today that Brick was a pleasure to work with. I was lucky enough my three and a half years in Waterford that I had um, such a player to live shoot. I, I, I suppose after a year, after the first half year, um, I, I came in, I think it was May or June, I came into that, to, to, to Waterford, and um, yeah. we managed to get to Mal Ireland, and Brick was a big part of that. But then from then on, I decided maybe to give Brick a go at centre-back, and um, my God... It was um, to me. It was a, a great decision. You have um, a player with vision, a player with heart. Um, he had the whole package. Let's be honest with you. He, he just he was relentless. He, he he's a winner, and um, 
you know, I, I was delighted to be able to manage someone like Bert. In a way, I suppose, he, 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 you don't have to manage him because he's such a good player. And yet, you're able to say, can you do this? And for somebody to, to step into that centre-back role, like that's such a pivotal role. And you have to have not just physicality and a strength not to be pushed off the ball, but you have to have brains. He has that in abundance. Well, I, I think the best thing um, I could see about Brick, there was two or three things like it. He he wasn't a normal centre back that would just get ball and beat it down the field. You know, Everton had to have a reason with with Brick. Like ninety percent of the ball Brick got was a little flick forward. He was always giving it to a player, um, so he was in a good position. Um, so it wasn't hit down the field a fifty fifty ball. And, and I'm a great believer in this. Um, there has to be a, an end product to a ball. You know, and um, Brick always was able to get a man, give him the sharp pass. And um, I just felt that that was, that was so important um, to our forwards, is to give him a ball that, that could put him in a good position. And modest out, what was he like off the field? You know what? Um, Brick could be quiet enough, but you, you could have the crack with him, um, which was great. We, we, we'd often have the crack, have the banter. But the big thing I, I always think about Brick is when he spoke everybody listen I think that's so important when he speak inside in the dressing room or whatever the story is you'd listen um, and often I've had chats of Brick on my own and uh, certainly everything would be for the betterment of the team but even if you told him or given him an instruction he wouldn't, he'd always take it he'd never question you, he'd take it and he'd, he'd 100% um, do what's right for the team We are blue and white. We are WLR. Well, under David Fitzgerald, Brick won back-to-back All-Stars at centre-back. He was named RT Man of the Match in the 2010 Munster Final Replay as Waterford saw off Cork by 116 to 113 after extra time. Uh, Michael, not a traditional Munster final, but what a game. Yeah, I suppose it was hugely exciting. Um, end to end, I suppose, extra time. And beyond the uh, night time, I suppose, added to it hugely, the occasion. Um, I suppose it mightn't be the most free-flowing hurling you'll ever see, but I suppose for excitement, you couldn't you couldn't have passed it. Lorna Porca with Tomás McCarthy on WLR. Thanks to PWC Waterford. Well, you're listening to a Lorna Porca special here on WLR, Brick Flicks, a tribute to the inter-county career of the record-breaking Dacia hurler, Michael Brick Welch. Well, Kilkenny legend Eddie Brennan told Damien Tiernan on Dacia Today that Brick was the type of player that Brian Cody would have admired. You, you look at your own setup, and, and, and you often say, you know, is there players from other counties or what guys do you say would fit into that? And I think, you know, with, with the qualities that Brian Cody always looked for from us um, as regards um, your application, your attitude and stuff like that, I think Brick would have would have sat very much into that uh, spectrum, like, and, and it would have been a kind of a guy that... Uh, you know that Brian Cody is the, is the kind of guy he looks for, um, because he he exudes all the qualities of of a team player. And um, no, you know there was never ego involved. It was never um, for the wrong reasons. It was just get in there, do his job, and 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 help the guys around him. And uh, there was always honesty of endeavour. So I think someone like that, you know, with with those type of qualities, is what you look for as as a leader in a group. Um, and and I think it was always in a very understated way. Like he was a guy who just um, just got on with business. And um, uh, when you have, you know, if you have someone like that in your group, it marries in well with, with, with other kind of, uh, with traits that you might have. But I think probably his versatility as much as anything else, you know, he went from yes. uh, an all-action midfielder back into a guy at centre back and you know he was able to go up in the forwards he could do it all really and probably look his his, his fitness from base maybe on his football and exploit probably would have married into that and, and allowed him to be the, the player that he was but I think 17 seasons at inter-county level is just it's outrageous really to be honest in the modern era We are blue and white We are WLR So delighted to be joined the line now by two time All-Ireland winner with Offaly and Sunday game analyst Michael Dignan to look back on the career of Michael Welch and uh, Michael, why do you think he is so highly regarded not only in Waterford but right across the country? First of all, he was just a brilliant player. Um, you know, I think maybe underestimated a little bit, um, maybe at, in, in the early days. But I think he grew in 
in stature and people, you know, he, he, the simplicity of his game maybe maybe caused people to underestimate him, if you know what I mean, in the, in the early days, you know, to just to get the body laid off to the man in a better position and, um, and and you know, that that, that was really what his, his game was based on, on I thought, top task decision making. But I think over time people realise, look, from centre back to midfield to wing forward, centre forward, just a selfless player and uh, I think he, he 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 was just also such a sporting player. He was physically very strong, um, you know, and he just never seemed to be involved in any controversy. He just got on with it, and obviously then people were also aware of his prowess as well. And and I think just over time, and uh, he just he just he, he forged out his own um, unique place. I think in the GA, and, and we go down as one of the greats. And I suppose the nickname then as well, you know, he was. He was just known as Brick. There's not too many lads that have played over the years that just, you know, they're 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 recognised by by a nickname or their first name or whatever. So, I I just thought a, a fantastic fantastic player and a fantastic role model and and really, you know, when when you talk about team, I suppose he probably epitomised um, the the ultimate team player better than 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 most. You know, I think uh, uh, so. That, I suppose that's 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 uh, that's I suppose the biggest praise I could give him. Yeah, look, what, what were his main qualities as a hurler, Michael, in your view? Like, you watched him on so many occasions from the country box with RT. I, I think his ball winning was, you know, was was was, was fantastic. Um, his ability to play in so many different roles, uh, as I said, or his, his use of the ball, um, you know, and like this, the brick flick as it became known after her, which I suppose when you're coaching teams, you wouldn't be necessarily telling us to play the ball. You said to use your hand pass, which he did as well, but he was just able to use his left arm to maybe hold off a lad, drop the ball and flick it with the hurl. Um, but, um, you know, and a, a great hurling brain and, and I think, you know, also just a, a toughness and ability to, you know, to play so many matches that he did to be always available and very very rarely injured. I think there's an awful lot of boxes. Like, you know, when, when you talk about what you need to be to be an intercounty player, there's a lot of boxes to be ticked and he ticked them all so effortlessly, a great athlete as well. Um, so, you know, I think all that and, and um, you know, Waterford would have had a, a lot of, I suppose, um, very much, you know, off the cuff genius hurlers throughout his career. He would have played with so many. Like if you go from 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 the time of Ken McGrath, and Paul Flynn, and Owen Kelly, and and Tony Brown, and right through then to Dan Shannon, to, um, you know, John Milan. There were so many sort of instinctive, uh, brilliant players, and he knew his value then to the team. That he, you know, he would do the simple things. He would he would be a leader on the field. I, I from what I can gather from all the compliments he's got from the lads over the last week. A great leader off the field as well in a quiet way. So, um, so I, I just think you know that he really, he had very, he, he probably had very few weaknesses. Uh, like he wouldn't have been noted as a massive scorer, but he could still score. You know, when when it was the right thing to do, he didn't mind having a shot. But he was he was happy to give it to the lads that were, were gar- maybe guaranteed to put it over the bar. And uh, I think I think that just that that natural uh, that natural hurling brain, that instinct that he had, I think separated him from the rest. Yeah, and you mentioned earlier, Michael, like he won all stars in defence, midfield, and attack. Where do you think he played his best hurling for Waterford? Um, that's a tough one. I, um, you know, I think I think he was I think he was very I think he was I think I think he was very important everywhere. But I probably would have thought you know I thought he spelled at centre back. I thought he was I thought he was excellent because if you take you know the different types of of centre backs that there have been over the years, um, some centre backs like Ken uh, Ken was so flamboyant you know and covering ground and you know long range clearances and all that. But I suppose Briggs' ability to hold the centre and um, you know and and uh, you know to, as I say to win the ball laid off. Um, and had that command and presence. And I thought he, I thought, I thought that was, that was an important spell. But you know, he, it's, it's hard to really answer that because, you know, I think every role he carried out, he carried out so well. And you know, even when, when he was up in the forwards there as well, I say I mentioned some of those great stick men that Waterford had and some great finishers. But they needed somebody like Brick as well, you know, and Seamus Prendergast. I think maybe he's another man that fits that model that to win the hard ball and you know, to be physically so strong and to put so much pressure on, you know, you, you, you could have a very good wing-back or centre-back and you put break on him and he'd stop him hurling as well as, you know, you saw that as recently as, as a couple of summers ago with Mark Coleman, you know, putting, able to, the ability to, to win so much possession and put so much pressure on, on maybe ball play and half-backs. So that's very valuable. So, look, I don't think, you don't win all-stars easily and you certainly don't win them across all the lines without being an exceptional player. Well, I hope you enjoyed our special tribute to Michael Brick Welch. Brick Flicks here on WLR, brought to you by PWC Waterford. Thanks so much for listening. Take care, and until next time, Slonga Fold.